Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series and I know you guys have been enjoying your team game so much so I thought I'd bring you one more this afternoon for good measure because you've been so well behaved. First of all though, before we roll out with the action, quick message going out to the wider community guys if you didn't already know, you don't keep up to speed with these things. Supreme Commander Forged Alliance and its predecessor, regular old Supreme Commander 1 Vanilla, are currently up for sale on Humble Bundle, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, you can pick up both of these games for a dollar apiece. That is nothing. So all of you guys hiding behind the excuse of, I'm too poor, I don't have any money, you, are no, <laughs> you now no longer have any excuse at all get your big shiny metal acu backsides in our lobby right now anyway that's enough of that on to today's game and it's going to take place on a map called the drunken pirates dance i shit you not that is actually the name of the map but i'm very excited uh so let's go over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on whoever came up with that map name deserves an award for the most amount of words used in the title of a map. Anyway, let's take a look at the teams and their starting locations. We'll bring up the handy little thing. Actually, we'll do that in a sec. We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top right and this Team 2 down here at the bottom left. Now we'll bring up the little old player sheet. Where are you? Come on, come on. There we go. Immense. So for Team 1 up here at the top, it's Captain White in Vivacious Violet, and he's going Aeon, opening first land, and his teammate to his right, haven't seen this colour in a while, it's Fecal Brown, and it's Siava, and uh, he's going uh, UEF first air, and to his right, thirdly for Team 1 down here, seen a lot of this guy, and uh, commented in the last video was the other day. I've been another one of Carlos' videos, yes, and you're in another one today. Stop having so many entertaining games, I command you. Anyway, it's RA's Mad Mozart. He's going Cyber and Baby Blue, opening first air, hamstringing himself just a tad with the old engineer roll off times, but he doesn't care. He's obviously got big plans, or that was a mistake. Uh, last but not least, shining brighter than our sun, it's none other then Beetlejuice in Elephantine Grey. Uh, doesn't really go with the whole star theme, but I'm sure he's not too bothered. He's going Seraphim, opening first land, second air. So that's Team 1 and how they look. Going over to Team 2 down here at the bottom, it's Arrow, Arrow 24X. Uh, probably supposed to spell something clever in number plate language like Arrow Tax, but he's going to be called Arrow for all ten tents purposes today. Anyway, he's going... Uh, what is that? It's kind of... I don't know, Mediocre Magnolia or something. Anyway, he's going Aeon opening first land. And secondly, for Team 2 to his left over here in Lurid Green, it's Chris Durrell. Sounds like something out of Blade Run. I think we cast this guy once or twice before. Definitely recognize that name. And he's going UEF opening first land. Thirdly, for Team 2 over here in Regal Purple, it's Aki. And uh, if you're watching Aki, do tell us whether you're a guy or a girl, because that just sounds a bit like a girl's name. And we have had one or two in previous casts, so uh, they do exist. Girls are real. I've seen them on the TV. And uh, he's going Seraphim, opening first air. No penalty, of course, for that in Roll of Times, as we are well aware. And last but not least, up here at the top for Team 2, going Pontiff White, Cybrin, opening first land. It's none other than Shimras. So those are the players... That is where they are starting and how they stack up and all their different colors and all the other salient pieces of information. Let's take a look at this map, man. This is unreal. It's a 20k map, so 20 by 20, pretty large, as you're aware. A few bombers actually out already from one from Siava harassing Aki's engineers. That engineer gets away lightly, 25 hit points left on the clock. But uh, let's take a little look at what's going on here. Lots of bombers coming across the ocean from Team 1. You've got this main middle island here that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that looks like 10 mass points in total. You've got these little side islands here and then lots of mass dotted around the, uh, the ocean. And you can see that uh, water's going to be pretty key. Navy's going Navy's to be pretty key in this little matchup in this map. You do have some protection in some of these places. There's these little uh, mountains that you can hide behind. Good place to build your buildings up against those. Protect from any kind of direct cruiser fire. Because uh, if you manage to lose the naval game in this, I imagine you're going to be having 
a pretty bad day. But it does seem that uh, Aki managed to dispatch that bomber without suffering any major difficulties. Lose too many engineers, I don't think. We've already got a uh, Selen down here, or a couple of Selens actually down at the bottom from Beetlejuice. He wants to be well aware of what's coming up this pathway here. I don't blame him. A little bit of a transport engineer drop coming to one of these side islands here for Siava. He's looking to expand into the ocean islands nice and early on. Another engineer drop this time up at the top here. Got a chariot, uh, not full, but half full of engineers there from Captain White. Drops them off next to that mass point. That's probably a good place for him to set up shop if he can get a little fire base together there and stop any potential progression up here from Shimraz, but you see what I mean, it's uh, very much like Eye of the Storm in that kind of sense, it's slightly square, not quite circular, but the, uh, the pathways are very narrow and uh, control of the oceans will be essential for whoever wants to come out of this on top. Bomber circling there for Mozart, and just to pick up an engineer that was on a coffee break there from Aki. Aki, known for her lenient staff conditions, they get lots of time off. Very nice to see. Interceptor out there from Aki is going to fall foul to three from RA's Mad Mozart, sitting just off the coastline there. And look at this, Mozart is determined to stamp his authority on the main central island. He's walked his ACU right the way across. We've also got... Engineers being dropped in now from Captain White from that earlier chariot we saw. And uh, more engineers, a skyhook full coming in from Mozart's going to take the side island as well. And uh, you take a look at it, it's uh, almost kind of uh, an average Joe's there or thereabouts generally. But uh, a few just over the 1500 mark, several under, but of course... Check out RA's Mad Mozart. He's way ahead on ranking, so he's going to be the one to watch in this matchup. And it's also interesting to note of uh, both these teams, they're all packing one of each race, which is always interesting. So we've got the full spectrum of races represented in both teams. Engineer quite far forward there for Arrow gets picked off. Imagine that uh, mass extractor there. Is probably going to be next on the list. Still more bomber harass coming in from Siava. This time going after Shimras. And with a map this size and shape, I do anticipate being in split screen quite a lot on this one, guys. So I do apologize in advance for those of you that can't bear split screen, but it really is the only way to keep on top of things when all of the action starts happening on so many different fronts. A couple of little frigates down here for Beetlejuice starts wailing away on some of the build capacity there. It was trying to get a torpedo launcher together. They will be unsuccessful. And now we've got a vulnerable naval factory that's already in the process of teching up to T2. Question is, is there enough firepower there to stop it? You should definitely redirect that second frigate to make sure he takes that out first. Having said that, unlikely to get any units out even if he does manage to finish the upgrade on that one. Siava dropping an engineer off down here. Look at this teamwork. He didn't come down here for the mass. No. Mozart's got the mass. He's not cross about it. He's just going to build some intel for his teammate. How very, very respectful. See? There are nice players that play this game. True story. But, uh... <laughs> Beetlejuice just allowing these frigates to get on with it. That particular that naval factory goes down into the red, but not bothering to move both of the forward. He does redirect them, though, when he realizes there's a tide under construction. He's going to massacre most of the build capacity that was working on it, but he's not going to be in time to stop that thing from going online. Arrow has his commander, the head of his commander, just popping out of the water there. I think they could probably have taken that between the two of them. Arrow starts to wrap it up, though. Dude, just pulling out a little bit further to join this suicide up here, this submarine. He's definitely going to lose a frigate out of it. Ah, oh, no, maybe not. Some countermeasures. Yeah, it's ca uh, torpedo defense, of course, from the suicide. Yeah, so nicely done there. Doesn't manage to save completely, but maybe has bought him enough time to snag this. Maybe not. Completes the upgrade. 
And now there's a bunch of engineers turning up to help rep it. It's going to be very interesting to see who comes out on top. There's no backup coming in for Beetlejuice at the moment. But we've had a little engineer drop in the middle from Chris Durrell. So he has made a play for the middle. But he's going to find it supremely difficult to overwhelm Mozart, who has his ACU on the main middle landmass. And he's currently heading south west with it going straight after or towards those factories and there goes the last of those little naval units a uh, little bit uh, more successful in the way they managed to took out, take out a lot of build capacity but unsuccessful in allowing that naval factory to go online and uh, indeed upgrade to T2 but look at this a lot of naval units from Captain White bearing down on Shimras at the top of the map. Mozart, as you would expect, way out of front on Eco 87 per mass per tick coming in for him. Shimras running at second at 64, Siava at 62, Chris Durrell at 66. So it really does bounce backwards and forwards between the teams. But uh, as you'd expect, Mozart really going out and expanding heavily. And this is going to be the challenge, I think. He's way out and above the rest in terms of ranking and potentially, obviously, skill as well. And now he's going to have the largest eco as well. Cheeky little ghetto gunship laned up there for Mozart. Brings it in to help thin out some of the resistance before he sends an ACU in, potentially. In fact, ACU's on an upgrade there. Pauses it for the moment. These archers doing their best. He's going to have to bug out of there or drop those off if he wants to keep them. Apparently he's not there that fast there. Dime a dozen. Down that goes. T2 Navy online for Siava in the kind of, I suppose, kind of a little harbour area there in the centre. We've already got a governor on the pitch. Could do with sending that in with some of Captain... White's naval forces there to deal with this naval factory from Shimras before it gets too built up around here with naval defense. They've definitely got an opening. They're more concerned about what's going on down here, but to be honest, it's just two factories. Mozart, when he finishes his upgrade on his comm, really could deal with that, I think. But uh, it's all well and good saying that when we know what's going on, we can see everything. That is what they are seeing. It's a different story. We're just not privy to all the information. You don't really know what's going on in that pocket. And uh, if you're playing the percentages, taking it stage by stage, grabbing territory one thing at a time, it does make sense to focus on this kind of communal objective that they seem to have at the moment. But a little bit of a push out there from Chris Durrell. Moving his strikers and archers out, knocking aside... Some of these tinfoil Aeon units as they go. As soon as they realize suddenly that Mad Mozart's commander is there, the ping goes out. They turn around and go, mummy. Let's run away. And then they realize they're autonomous. They don't have money's mummies. So they stop running. Don't have money either. But a little bit of a Zooey drop coming in here from Beetlejuice. Let's take a look at where that's planned going to be dropped off in the bay that could put some real pressure on this naval factory which actually has already been taken out once presumably by this destroyer 21 kills on that sucker already so Beetlejuice really stepping up the tempo of his campaign his naval campaign against Arrow he's moved his ACU down here and is setting up a fire base there's a whole band of engineers there on a replay mission that are going to come to a very sticky end if they continue on that trajectory bunch of Zooey's lost there as uh, I assume as uh, that transport got shut down now the naval factory starts to take some fire meanwhile we've got Corsairs bombarding Chris's position here and the last of those factories is destroyed in the center and that now represents 
pretty dominant control there on that main land mass for Team 1. A few Barracudas out for Shimras. Trying to chase down some of these governors from Siava. A Valiant just shadowing them, but massively outgunned. Far too many torpedoes coming his way to for him to be able to contend with. Corsairs change direction now that their mission, their sorties are complete on that central island. And this time moving in to work on the static defenses that Shimras is building. He could do a lot better, I think, to focus on all of the build capacity that's helping him spew out these Barracudas. That's what's really essential at the moment. I want him to get established. He did have some wall sections thrown together up here as well from Captain White, but this uh, horde of Mantis from Shimras has beaten their way through and are now making their way round towards Captain White's base. There's no more static D on the ground back here. His best bet being as he's got T3 air would be to spew out some T2 gunships or even restorers. That works too if you can get one or two of those out. And that should be able to halt the progression of those Mantis. And there goes that T2 factory once again. Aaron needs to be pretty careful there. He manages to get in and reclaim it. He's taking some torpedo fire from that destroyer and a miasma going up a static t2 artillery installation for aeon right on the beach only problem is that uh, the interceptors overhead will surely see that and this could go straight in right now and take out this engineer and or the structure before it completes if he's paying attention moves forward a little bit pursuing the commander and he's actually down into the red 2300 hit points on the comm there and he's got a lot of room to move forward if he so desires but the land is going to get in the way so oh, eats one more shot just as I say that and away he goes Miasma nullified actually not nullified it does manage to complete and is now turning for a firing solution on that destroyer but I don't think it's going to get a shot off because torpedo bombers from Chris Durrell turn up and ease the pressure but masses amount of torpedo bombers while we're talking about them over here from Mo Mad Mozart going straight after the horde of Barracudas for Shimras accompanied by some pretty sturdy ASF protection from uh, Aki not protection sorry he's going after that's the wrong team Guile nicely done it happens more often than I'd like to admit. So no protection for him. It's Siava who comes in to try and assist those torpedo bombers. But it is T1 versus T3. There's a lot of Inties next door as well over here for Mozart. And uh, instead of worrying about those Mantis, those Restorers are kind of holding their position up here. That is a good turn of events for Team 2. If Aki hadn't transitioned into ASF, I don't think anyone would have been doing it, and they would have been supremely vulnerable in the air. 18 minutes gone in this one so far. 193 mass per tick income for Mad Mozart, way out of front, as you'd expect, having predominantly all of the mexes locked down on this central island teching up nicely. Let's take a look at the reclaim side of things. Mozart's banked 1100 mass. Only 14 for Aki. Not a lot over there to be fair. 300 odd for Chris Durrell. 6000 odd for Shimras. He's doing a little better than the rest so far. 2200 for Siava. 2000 for Captain White. 800 for Beetlejuice. And 3,400 for Arrow. No spectacular breakaways in Reclaim there. Shimras leading the pack, though, for the moment. And uh, for the moment, a bulwark shield boat provides some cover to the Coopers. Siava's Coopers from Aki and Shimras's combined fleet. He's going to back up towards the main bay area.
And the naval yard has been re-established once again back here for Arrow. And after that last little escapade, he's managed to get his comm under some shielding. He's got a few engineers on there. Adding to his HP. Obviously a little bit intimidated by that last passage of play. Chris Durrell comes in up here with some of his torp bombers. Helping his teammates harass this fleet of Siavas. I love these little sonar platform equipped with their very own torpedoes. More than a little useful, it has to be said. Now these ASFs want to be a little bit careful from Aki. Eating governor fire unnecessary. unnecessarily. There's no threat around here air-wise. He doesn't need to be hanging out over the top of this fleet. And taking more fire from the air cleaners on this island there from Siava. He is obviously predominantly concerned with the torpedo bombers that are coming out of that air factory. But it doesn't necessitate him standing right over that. And once again another cheeky Zooey drop from Beetlejuice and now he's backed up by Mad Mozart's got a couple of boats on the field Arrow's lost that naval yard once again more miasmas being constructed on the beach this time though they're taking direct destroyer fire probably should have started with the shield gen first Zooey's come in and fire a wide dispersal pattern of artillery shells taking out all of the build capacity working on it and now all of the coastal mass is under threat for Arrow Chris Durrell coming in to try and assist his teammate he's got three Coopers it's not going to help him uh, against the Zooies though and really for this kind of general defense team two could definitely do with the odd tech two gunship just for use of cleaning up stuff on the coastline that gets through like this zooey drop which is now making a major nuisance of itself working on its third and soon to be fourth t2 mechs as they advance and Chris Durrell's Coopers and Bulwark ship have already succumbed to the combined fire of those two fleets. Beetlejuice sticks it at this corner to continue to harass Arrow. Who can't come out right now and overcharge those Zooies because he's on an upgrade and he's so very nearly finished it. Zooies pummeling Arrow. He is going to finish but he's down to half his HP already down again into the red 2,000 hit points left on the clock and a wave of fighter bombers come in from Beetlejuice how on earth is he gonna get out of this one and he doesn't 23 minutes gone in this one arrow is ejected from the game and team two officially go behind Chris Durrell trying to thin out the Navy here from Mab Mozart and Aki providing some cover. But Arrow just not able to get established in this one so far. Beetlejuice kept up too much sustained pressure. But Siava now under threat in the middle. Three Salems and a Siren. Putting a lot of damage on the units in this bay. Salem manages to survive. New Siren turns up. Now they can advance. A couple of Barracudas on the scene as well. And now it's time for Beetlejuice to press on and start harassing the next person in line which is Chris Durrell who is busy working on as many rover drones as he can get his hand on increasing his build capacity next 
next wave of boats, the next micro fleet ready for Chris Durrell. Comes out, four Coopers and a bulwark boat. They're going to be successful at least in taking down that cruiser. But uh, a little bit of a push in the sky from Captain White. A couple of restorers, may well have been the restorers we saw earlier. They're now heavily protected with their own ASF covering complement. And Mozart wheeling north to assist Siava's base is going to force Shimras out the other entrance to the harbour. Tail between his legs. Siava, meantime, hanging on to pretty much everything he had before. And not only that, he's got a bunch of reclaim to pick up now as well. It's not looking great at the moment for Team 2, it has to be said. But still, 25, 26 minutes gone, 20k map. It's fair to say it's early days. Only one player out of the game so far. Major engineer drop from Aki. Where's it going? It's going straight down here. It wants to pick up some of that reclaim and no doubt some of those mexes from their deceased teammate's base. And if you look at the uh, the map, in terms of map control, Team 1 sitting on pretty much 75-80% of the map now. Maybe a little bit more, maybe 90%. Aki with a decent amount, amount of ASFs, but Captain White is catching up fast. And Mab Mozart has his own little bundle in the middle and now down over here as well he sinks up with the fighters coming in Aki does a pass does he want to hang around though is the question and it's gonna be tight who's gonna come ahead in this one come out of it ahead Mozart manages to break off without Aki getting in behind him, so there'll be no chase down, killing for our Regal Purple Seraphim. Naval Yard still getting assistance from engineers. To be honest, those engineers need to just bug out of there. So lots of aggression coming out from Team 1, lots of consistent pressure. And now another Zooey drop from Beetlejuice. Where's he heading? He's going straight for Chris Durrell who has been obviously quite concerned about those Seraphim cruisers. He's been spamming buzzkills like they're going out of style. It's going to be tough for that Zooey to make a landing. What's there in terms of anti-air? nothing but the ASFs from Aki are and instead of a dangerous little Zooey drop Chris Durrell gets a free mass gift now the crews are about to bite the dust there decent little torpedo run from Chris and a monkey lord en route will probably have been picked up there by Aki with this little air engagement that's kicking off right above it but the uh, only problem is with that is Aki has lost the main central body of ASFs in that engagement Mozart just patrolling this coast at leisure with three sirens and a Salem an experimental bomber from Aki how did I miss that one where on earth was she building it drops a bomb right on top of Beetlejuice and takes out the core mass and gets another bomb off a beautiful bombing run this time on Mad Mozart 4 T3 energy plants 
taken out and a T3 mass extractor. Will he get another one off as well? There's been no pressure on it at all. This one slipped in completely under the radar. Gets a bomb off right on top of Siava's base. The shields go down. Now finally the ASFs for Team 1 turn up. Captain White getting in behind it. So is Mad Mozart. He's turning around to try and get another solution on Siava. I don't think one bomb's going to do it though. He's dropped the bomb. He's been shot out of the sky though as well. Are they both going to land on top of Siava? They are and oh my god. Siava taken out essentially by his own teammates who were just trying to help. Shot the thing out of the sky and it landed in his face. Siava ejected from the game at the 30 minute mark and team two go level in terms of player count of course way way behind still on map control and eco Mad Mozart sitting on 289 mass per tick obviously has just lost a pretty significant portion of his power grid look at that minus 3400 net needs to get those T3 factories back in play immediately. How about his teammate to the south, Beetlejuice, also lost a few things in that. Not quite so bad in terms of power, but lost all of his core mexes at this point in the game. Half an hour in, you would expect that to be four T3 mexes that have just gone in the proverbial toilet. So that's a lot of eco that Aki has just taken out in two passes essentially He's taken out a player and crippled two others unreal that might be enough of a helping hand to get team two back into this game meanwhile horde of vespers coming in from captain white getting in amongst shimras's units there's a lot of salems in there as well though you can see the main body of torpedoes coming out of those vespers are going after the cruisers the siren cruisers there but there's so many salems and of course the salems equipped with torpedo defense will be interfering heavily with the incoming fire from those vespers meanwhile a few restorers posturing there for captain white trying to get in and cause some damage to Shimras's base. The only problem for him, of course, is there's a whole army of bangers on the floor waiting for him. But looky, looky, what have we got here? Monkey Lord making its way onto the land. We saw it a moment earlier. It's only just arrived. But the Ithota, the chicken, is finished at just the right time. And that Monkey Lord causes virtually no damage as a result. That was perfect timing there for Aki. So a series of events, excellent skill combined with a little bit of luck has made life a little bit easier for Team 2. Meanwhile, Mozart and Beetlejuice pressing Chris Durrell once again a little bit with their navy in the Bay Area. But the air supremacy that Team 1 have got at the moment is frightening, but they're looking very thin in the water indeed, at least in this portion of the water. This is a nasty section at the moment for Team 2, but Team 1 have got nothing in the northern section, and that's pretty significant fleet of Salem's bearing down on Captain White's base. And of course, don't forget, those Salem's have no regard for unit type and they will sprout legs and just go a walking through your base if they feel that the mood is going to take them that way. And Chris is going to spew out an outrageous amount of clink hammers. Be very surprised if he ends up building all of those. That's a lot of eco that's tied up. He's certainly under a lot of pressure. But, uh, I know it's tricky. Captain White realizes the danger he's in. He's going to lose that outlying factory. And he's literally got nothing in this base to stop these Salems. And there's also a Monkey Lord that's come in the side door from Shimras. I'd say Captain White's in a major spot of bother right now. There's 
is uh, Ifota doing what he can to keep those units at bay. But Chris Durrell has taken a lot of fire. He got three clink hammers online, but he's down to just 18, 1900 hit points. Gets himself behind a hill and is able to block some of this incoming Sirem and Salem fire. Of course, the buzz kills are all well and good against the Seraphim cruisers, but they're not going to help you against the direct fire cruisers or the destroyers that he's been facing. Chris Durrell trying to get some extra shielding up over here, but Mozart, seeing if he can get a sneaky shot in around the corner, moves his cruisers, or sorry, his destroyers in. That shield very near to completion, but Chris Durrell very near to death as well. He moves, and the shield starts eating fire, and now it's gone, and now he's very exposed indeed, and some bombers come in over the top, and Chris Durrell gets eliminated. 35 minutes gone in this one. Team 2 go behind again. Another experimental coming in from Mad Mozart. This time a Soul Ripper. How many ASFs has Aki got to deal with it? That is the question. Not very many, but there are a decent amount of T3 static anti-air missile launchers, or whatever they are, plasma launchers, I guess, which are doing a pretty good job of shredding that Soul Ripper, which is completely unable to break through Aki shielding there. Aki, there's another mass present waiting for him. And uh, Shimras turns up at the last moment to try and shoo away that fleet. Too late for Chris Durrell, but look at what's been going on up here. Shimras has broken through most of Captain White's base. Where is Captain White's ACU is the question. There he is. He's airlifted him to safety and dropped him off in one of these corner ponds here. Are they on a plateau? No, it's actually the same, it's just the other side of a mountain range. Engineers being evac'd. One of them doesn't get away. Mikey Lord's got to give it to them, they have pretty good anti-air. But look at that, so many Salems. He's going to want to finish off this base though, he doesn't want to allow Captain White any easy route to get back in the game. He's essentially pacified, but look at this. More Navy pushing out from Shimras, this time pushing out east. And at this rate, Team 1, or mainly Shimras, is going to dominate the ocean. Just need Aki to stick to air production and go for it like crazy. Not waste any time on experimentals or anything like that. Just keep building ASFs because this is going to be the problem they face. Revenants and uh, Barracudas working on this fleet at the moment. If they can nullify the threat from the air they won't be in bad shape at all. This chicken from Aki moving on to the middle landmass or near enough there or thereabouts gets on here he can brush aside effectively nine mass points in team one's possession with this chicken alone assuming he can keep it covered from the air it doesn't get any gunship pressure or anything like that we're seeing some gunships on the field now from Mozart some whalers Obviously, the threat has more or less dissipated from Captain White. He was the one who was pumping out restorers earlier on. So it looks like it's going to be Mozart who's going to pick up the baton for gunship production. Shimras hovers up here. He ill-advisedly... It's not even a word, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Very ill-advised place to fly gets taken out by a superior number of ASFs. We can hear the chicken's guns going off now. One T3 mechs out of commission there for Mozart. Many others to go. Shimras continues to pressure these naval units over in the east. This mass Salem spam causing so many problems. For Team 1 at the moment. Strap Bombers. Still out 
for Mozart. Aki is doing what uh, he can to kill those off, but it's definitely not easy. A little bit of collateral damage there from those revenants of Mad Mozart's killing some of his own engineers. I cannot believe, you cannot underestimate how much this game has turned around. In comes a couple of halves. What's left of Captain White's offensive capabilities, essentially. Causing a little bit of damage, but I wouldn't say that's going to be anything too dangerous for Shimras. These fleets literally just cleansing the ocean. Mad Mozart's got another Soul Ripper in the air, though. There's a Harms in here as well. Just shred naval units. Shimras manages to get his cruiser in range. Immediately, the Soul Ripper turns to primary it. Most of the damage. Aki comes in with a wave of ASFs, drops to around three quarters of its health and falling. But Mad Mozart just looking so strong in the air right now, that's his one major advantage is this air control or air dominance I should say that he's got. Shimras just continues to roam with these fleets. You can see, I think he's switched up slightly. There's a more cruiser-heavy consistency coming out of this. It's not so much pure Salem anymore. He knows he's done most of the work in the sea. He needs to swap up and get more anti-air. It's air that's really threatening them now. <laughs> and Aki's chicken just kind of chasing. What? Look at this over here. Captain White picked up his comm. And uh, must have airlifted it over. I'm pretty sure that must have been a, uh, a suicide. He had nothing left. He had three T2 Mexes and a couple of T2 PGens up here. Maybe he potentially was going for a T3 com drop and got shot down. You can see that there's a uh, T2 transport there. But uh, down he goes. So it is officially a 2v2 now. Monkey Lord from Shimras making the rounds on this section of the map down here. Could potentially cause problems. Knocks down a little bit of eco. Unlikely to get very far in the base though. Beetlejuice has a chicken defending. Was thinking about, oh he is in fact, building an experimental bomber now. And that's a good call. If they can hold on to air control, they won't be in a bad shape at all. Team 2 just need to expand like crazy on the air side of things. Absolutely essential that they wrestle control back in the skies. They're looking dominant still in the water. If they cannot hold the skies on a map like this, a 20k map. It's uh, always an uphill battle. Another monkey lord there from Shiraz, and that's the one that's been harassing, or harassed I should say, Captain White early. You can see 247 kills on that bad boy already. And his job is now cleansing this area of any of Mozart's eco but these Salem's finally meeting their match and it's whalers that are going to take them down. Soul Ripper coming in from Mozart. With a pretty decent ASF complement guarding it. But Mozart doesn't want to throw away his advantage here. Needs to be really careful Combined ASF power here from Shimras and Aki. 
They've forced away most of the ASFs. They've killed most of the ASFs of Mozart. They're staying on it for the moment until they eventually switch up. Uh, it looks like Shimras is going to stay on the Soul Ripper while Aki finishes off the ASFs. That's not bad work, but this uh, Monkey Lord that's caused so much damage over the course of this game is now under threat from Whalers, and you can see how quickly they're taking it down. So much damage coming off those puppies into the red. He's going for the water, but he's not going to make it. At least he managed to take down that mech's wave of ASFs turn up. It's too late for the Monkey Lord, but they can at least get the Consolation Prize, which is about eight or nine dead whalers strategic launch detected and a nuke from mad mozart's base what's it going for it's going straight for aki and i can only presume that means he hasn't got nuke defense what's going on here we've got nuke defense for shimras i'm not seeing any for aki there's a transport coming in aki looks like he's thinking about evacuating his com Oh, and he's so close to getting a nuke as well. That's about as irritating as it gets. And he's really struggling to get his comm on board. This could be an absolute disaster. Where's the nuke? It's coming in as we speak. He still hasn't managed to get on board the transport. Oh, this is going to be bad. The nuke makes its turn. Aki is on board. The transport goes away. It gets EMP'd in the sky. His base is incinerated and I think that means he's okay at least for the moment that is quite the EMP there it goes I love that as if that wouldn't make this thing just fall out of the, si of the sky but apparently not and uh, Aki oh that's a catastrophe for team two only I've only gone for nuke defense a little bit earlier on That just wouldn't have been possible. And he so nearly had a nuke of his own. Is there any nuke defense in this base? Nothing of Mad Mozart. That would have been Mad Mozart essentially out of the game. He's lost the eco in the middle. And all they would have had to worry about is Beetlejuice. Still working on that experimental bomber. 60% done or so. 60-65. And now we finally... After the best part of about 40 minutes of solid action, we finally reach a lull in activity as these guys have more or less depleted all of their weapons. Afford to bump this one up a little bit. The little airdrop coming in of engineers for Aki going to pick up some mass from Chris Durrell's old base, which is still all perfectly intact with its reclaim never has anybody needed mass more than Aki needs it right now to rebuild that base but sub hunters in play now for Beetlejuice pushing up towards Shimras's naval yards but he does at least have a harms there he could really do with one or two more he's gonna start facing some sub hunters on a regular basis shimras expanding nicely with engineers along the top pathway there i just can't believe that's such a, a knife edge just th i mean look mozart's just got nothing left in here really you land a nuke right there, and that is game, I'm pretty sure of it. And instead, we're in a very different situation. I'd still like to sort of think that Shimras and Aki are ahead. Well, not on mass though. Look at it, it's 517 mass total income for Team 1. Team 2 seeing on about 400. Pretty significant difference there. Beetlejuice asking if uh, his 
teammate wants to control it. I'm assuming he's talking about the Awasar, which is now complete and en route to Team 2's territory. There's a Monkey Lord incoming from Mozart. Just looks like Team 2 have been well and truly muted after that last passage of play. It's quite a hefty fleet building up here, but they're not out and about doing stuff. The threat from the air has been too much, and of course it's going to get worse now that Aki has been so greatly affected by that nuke. Aki immediately spots the signature, which must only be the experimental bomber. And goes straight after it. Does manage to get the kill with Shimras's ASF's help. Aki bugs out, though. And Shimras goes in. It's an unfortunate little miscommunication there. Shimras is going to lose those ASF's being outnumbered. And that Monkey Lord makes landfall Strategic launch detected. on the peninsula and another nuke going after Aki again from Mozart Aki's commander's being pinged all of the build capacity is control K'd as to not so as to not offer free veterancy to the monkey lord That nuke is beelining straight for the center of the base and maybe straight for the area of the map which Aki is headed with the ACU. It's certainly looking like they're on a collision course. It's going to be close. No, it's not. Aki bows out of the game at 51 and a half minutes, leaving Shimras all alone and now team to really do face an uphill struggle no prospect of getting back on top of the air game now and I'd be absolutely amazed if he manages to turn this one around from this point Monkey Lord bearing down on Shimras's position now. How did Aki's defences do? Pretty well. Only 13k HP on that sucker left. He's not going to go directly in. He ducks back into the water. Shimras gets embroiled in an ill-advised air engagement outside the front of his base. This is where he wants to be engaging. He wants to be able to force these guys over the top of all of his static anti-air, over the top of his cruisers. Or cruiser, I should say. And to Mozart's credit, look at the amount of Gunthers he spammed up up here. It's a lot of T2 static artillery. But that's a lot of Salem's from Shimras marching on that position. is who is going to be successful on that one that's your screenshot of the week right there a lot of that fire being blocked by the land at the moment when it gets over the brow of that hill should be a little bit different we've got revenants coming in to try and deal with them but they're getting one pass only as they hit these cruisers at the back and then they're getting shot down that ion generator is about to explode takes a bunch of those hives with it. Those Gunthers creating a lot of problems for these Salems. Don't want to turn tail and run, he wants to clean out this whole area. Some sub hunters harassing. Shimras' base, and they do manage to pick off one of the T2 factories, and it's the HQ as well. That's not good. In fact, that's extraordinarily bad. 
Gunther's finally die out, but in come the Whalers. Those Siren class cruisers have been called back. He's written off these destroyers. They've done their job. He needs this air cover over his base. But an experimental bomber incoming. What's the target? Where's the commander? Commander's in the water. Goes straight over the top. And it's going for all the build capacity around the T3 headquarters. Takes a huge, huge bomb to the face. And instantly, 112 kills on that experimental bomber. Taking him to a five-star experimental bomber. If that was one that got a few kills earlier, it can't have been 115 units there. Well, I suppose it could potentially. Drops a bomb off, nails T3 mechs. Can it get another one off? And Shimras, unreal. Tried to tele Mazer, must have done. I did see him on an upgrade earlier. Last ditch effort. Tries to tele Mazer across over to Beetlejuice's base. But Beetlejuice, too well covered by Revenants there from Mad Mozart. It was never really going to end any other way. Even if he managed to get the kill on Beetlejuice, he was going to be totally exposed. His base was going to die off from this experimental bomber, I have no doubt. But uh, what a game. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Not quite passing the one-hour mark for epicosity, but I hope you'll agree good fun nonetheless as always more to come from me in the future guys in the meantime stay well and stay safe this is guile signing out